In this tutorial, we'll do a brief overview of Articulate Engage 360 so that you're familiar with what it is and how it works. And then the following tutorials will provide more detail and some practice activities. What makes Engage such a great e-learning application is that it produces really nice looking modules, yet it doesn't require any programming. And that's because Engage is built around a few core templates and then creating the interactions really is as simple as copying and pasting your content into the appropriate form. And then what you create can be published on its own as a simple micro e-learning module as in these examples. Or it can be inserted into a course built with Articulate Presenter using PowerPoint. In these examples, the Engage interactions are inserted into PowerPoint slides that are part of a larger course. So whether you decide to use Engage for quick micro e-learning modules or as part of a larger course, the production process is mostly the same and it's very easy. Now let's take a look at Engage's user interface and learn how to build an interaction. To get started, let's go ahead and click on New Interaction. And this is going to open up a window where you have 20 different types of interactions to choose from. So we're going to go ahead and choose the accordion interaction. So I hit OK. Now this is going to open up your production area. Now before we even do anything, let's go ahead and look at what we get out of the box. So I'm going to select Preview. And this is going to show me the accordion interaction. And essentially the way this interaction works is I have these different accordion tabs. So when I click on it, the information is going to slide in. So each interaction works a little bit different, but they essentially work the same way. And that's I'll have an interactive element, in this case the sliding panels. And when I click on those, it'll expose some content. So I have a title, some text, and I can have a video or a picture in here as well. Now you'll also notice that we have this black title bar. So with Engage, that'll come on by default. Uh, you can change that to a light version. You can also turn that off. And then you'll be able to modify the player as well. The other thing you'll notice is that you have different preview options. So for right now, I'm previewing it in desktop mode, but I can also preview in one of the mobile modes. So I have like a tablet landscape mode, so I can see what the interaction looks like on a mobile device. I can do the same thing uh, with a smartphone. So you'll notice that uh, it's going to look a little bit different. You also notice that you have a responsive player. Uh, in this example with the desktop mode, you can see I've got the default player, but when I go to a mobile device, I'll actually get a responsive player that's going to allow better playback for the mobile device. Let's go ahead and close the preview. So that's everything that we get without actually even adding any content. So you can see the starting point is really nice, and then it's just a matter of adding your content. Now regardless of the type of interaction you build, uh, the production process is basically the same. You have your steps. In this case, the accordion interaction uh, uses those sliding panels. But let's say this was a media panel interaction, then these steps would represent the different pieces of media. Or if it was a tabs interaction, then the steps would represent the tabs. And then uh, each interaction step will have a title that we see up here. It also has some text. I can record audio here, so I can record some audio, or I can import some existing audio. I also have an audio editor here, so if I have some audio, I can edit that. Uh, and we'll look at that in more detail in the other tutorials. And then down here, I can add some media. So I can add pictures, uh, the characters that come with the tools, and then I also have video and flash. Um, up here, you have your toolbar and you can see I can add or delete panels. I can also do that down here. I can move them around and then over here is my text editor. Uh, if I have interaction properties, so let me click on that. Each interaction is going to have these three tabs. So there's a playback so I can change how I want the interaction to play back. I have colors and effects so I can change the colors. So I can use the defaults or I can use uh, one of these default color schemes. Or I can actually create my own color schemes and use that. As you can see here, here's the header. So uh, by default it's on as dark. I can choose a light version or I can choose none. And then you can see I have some other choices as well. All of this makes sense when you read them. Uh, quality settings, I can modify those here as well. Usually standard works fine, but if you're in a slow bandwidth environment, uh, you may want to 
make all the file sizes smaller or you know you can also increase the quality as well so it's just a matter of playing around and seeing what works best for you then over here we have interaction size so by default it's four by three uh, we can do a 16 9 or you can do a custom size and that's something to consider before you actually start working on the interaction so for example we have these different modes now so we have desktop and then we have these mobile options let's say I wanted to build an interaction but I only wanted it to display on a smartphone here in that portrait mode so I don't want a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. I may want something that's a little bit taller and a little less wide so it fits the smartphone better. So um, that's something to keep in mind. And if you want to change that, you can just do that on the custom here. Turn off the lock aspect ratio and then you can set the resolution to anything that you want it to be. And then up here we have our colors and effects. So you can see we have our default color schemes. But you can always create a new color scheme. And then you can have it match your organization's brand. It's just a matter of selecting something. We'll just choose yellow here. And then you'll see it redrawn in live preview. And then you can see what you're changing and then change it to match uh, your organization's needs. You can also customize the player. You click on that. That opens your player properties. You'll get a preview of the current player. And then you can see you can add or delete features. Uh, you can modify the color scheme for the player. And um, there's some other things. Modify the text labels and then choose how it displays in the browser. And then the last thing is the preview and the publish. So if you click on preview, that'll open up a preview window where you can see what it looks like. So by default, you're going to preview it in the desktop mode. And you can see what it looks like and how it works. And then you also see the desktop player. Uh, when you go to one of the mobile modes, you'll see that the player changes to accommodate the responsive mobile player. So you get something that's going to look a lot better on your mobile device. And again, you've got the landscape and you've got portrait mode for tablet and landscape and portrait mode for your device. And you'll notice that when you look at this interaction on a smartphone in portrait mode, it's not going to look right. If it's in landscape mode, it's going to be a lot better. So what you can do is you can come over here to the settings and then you can choose how you want it to play back. So for example, I wouldn't want that on my uh, phone in portrait mode. So I would choose landscape only. And I would do the same thing for my tablet. So I hit OK. And now watch when I preview this in portrait mode. It's going to tell me I have to rotate my device. And when I rotate my device, uh, this is what it's going to look like. So that really comes in handy. That gives you a lot more control for the mobile delivery. And then with this responsive player, you're going to get a really clean uh, interaction to display on the device. Let's go ahead and close the preview. And then let's look at our publish options. So if I click on publish, you'll notice I have a few options here. So one is uh, publish to Articulate Presenter. So if I'm using Articulate Studio, and I'm using Presenter and building an interaction to insert into my Presenter course, I'll have the option to publish into that as a slide. Or I can also publish it as a tab on top of the player. I can also publish straight to Articulate 360. And then I can submit that to review or uh, use that to share the file. You'll notice that I can publish for web. And then I have a folder and I would upload that to a website. I can publish to Articulate Online. Then if I have an LMS, I can publish uh, for the LMS. I choose my publishing options here, my output, and then my reporting and tracking features. And so I can complete all this information. Again, it all makes sense as you read through that. Once you publish it, you'll get your LMS package and you can upload that uh, to your learning management system. Now when you go to publish, you'll notice that you have some properties. And that's going to be the same regardless of the publishing type except for presenter. But if I go to Articulate 360, I have my publishing properties here. If I go to web, I've got the same publishing properties. Now by default, the publishing format is going to be HTML5 with flash fallback. What that means is that by default, when the user accesses the course, it's going to play in HTML5. Now some older browsers aren't compatible with HTML5. So they're going to play in Flash. So it's going to start in HTML5, but the browser doesn't accommodate that. It'll play the Flash version. If you click on this, you'll notice that you have some options. So you can do HTML5 only. 
you can do HTML5 and then Flash as a fallback, or you can start with Flash and use HTML5 as a fallback if there's no Flash, or you can do just Flash. But by default, it's going to do the HTML5 Flash. Then, of course, you can publish for the Articulate Mobile Player as well. Once you publish that, you're going to get your files, and it's just a matter of uploading that. If you're using Presenter, it's going to publish to the PowerPoint file. If you're using Articulate 360, it's going to upload it to Articulate 360, and then you'll be able to see it in the Review tool. Uh, if you have uh, published for web, you'll get the files, and you'll need to upload that uh, to a server. And then, of course, Articulate Online, LMS, those will need to be uploaded to either Articulate Online. Uh, we'll do that automatically, and with the LMS, you'll need to upload that SCORM package to the LMS. And then publishing for Word will give you a Word output of the Engage interaction. And a lot of people use that to share with subject matter experts and they can review it and make some changes. And that's basically it. So you can create an interaction, you can preview it, and you can publish it. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to jump in the community and ask. We're there to help you. And then go ahead and watch the other tutorials to learn more about how to build the interactions in Articulate Engage 360.